Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, email from a listener who offices uh, in uh, the West Loop near the uh, one of the new migrant centers that's uh, being stood up this week. Uh, looking down at the new migrant center. Um, let's add that to the morning rat derby, dog excrement everywhere, car break-ins, graffiti, bums and thugs already there. Had an employee carjacked with a gun to his temple recently. Oh, that's great. I have a CCL, concealed carry license, and keep my Glock on my lap as I come and go. Um, the future of our company in the West Loop? Mm. Thinking about moving, huh? Precarious, perhaps. Uh, this, too, I mean, if your ire hasn't been stoked enough. Biden administration is deporting a Christian family from Germany who legitimately fears persecution and should qualify for asylum, while, of course, allowing 99% of illegal immigrants to stay in the United States, most of whom likely do not qualify for asylum, as we were just talking about in part with Will Hurd. Uwe, and do you know how I know how to pronounce Uwe? Because you, I heard you. You used your phone. No, I did not, actually. Oh. Uh, I know how to pronounce Uwe, not that I speak German, but Uwe Blob, Center for Indiana back in the day. Remember Uwe Blob on the Hoosiers? Wow. Okay. Uh, Uwe and his wife, uh, Hanneler Romike. Uh, you know how I pronounce it, Hanneler? Ow. Hanneler Blob. No, I just made that up. Uh, so uh, these two from Germany, they fled Germany in 2008 because they were threatened with prosecution and thousands of dollars in fines for the crime in Germany of homeschooling their children. Oh, for homeschooling? Yeah, I saw, I saw it's a beautiful family. Five children. So they located to Tennessee and filed for asylum. Why is the Biden administration after them? Just leave them alone. This is 2008. They've um, now had two children who are American citizens, two other children who married American citizens. The authorities denied their asylum claim in 2013. That's also instructive for the per, whatever percentage of it is. Does anybody really know of the actual asylum seekers? They applied for asylum in 2008. Their case got denied five years later. What kind of system is that? So now, for another decade, they've been staying here under an indefinite deferred action status. But last month, the Biden administration finally told them they must return to Germany. So here, this is the game that's run in part. The asylum seeker it takes five years to adjudicate your case. You spend a decade on deferred action. And then if you're deported, legitimately, I think I agree that this case it should be an exception, that there's legitimate legal persecution they face for something that we f would find objectionable, you know, the prosecution of them for homeschooling their children. So that is political persecution. Anyway, setting that aside, so you're five years to adjudicate the case, a decade on deferred, indefinite deferred action, and then somebody comes in and says, well, OK, uh, time's finally up. Then you have the people around. Well, well, they've been here for 15 years and they're good. Citizens. What kind of way is that to operate? Our immigration system. It's no kind of way. Tom Holman is a former acting director of ICE. He joins us now. Tom, thanks so much for being with us again. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know that. Um, you must get frustrated having to repeat the same things over and over again because it's not like so much of this is terribly complicated. But, um, you know, where, where are we at? 2.2 uh, million this fiscal year and 99 percent have been released into the country. Yeah, to the point you're just making, all these people being released in the country, if you look at the immigration court data over the last 10 years, uh, nearly nine out of 10 will lose their case because they simply don't qualify for asylum. I mean, you know, you know, they're not really escaping fear and persecution from their homeland. If they would, they claim asylum in Mexico or Honduras. And when, they, when they escape their country, have they not escaped that fear and persecution? 
So they go through several other free countries before they get here. So it's really not about fear and persecution. It's about getting to the United States. So nine out of ten will lose their case, but just like you said, it's going to take years for that case to work its way through. And by the time it gets through and they get ordered removed, they'll have one or two USC kids. And when I was ICE director, I mean, I got called even from Republican senators. You know, why did you remove that person? Right. Who's had two USC kids? Well, he didn't have two USC kids when he entered illegally. He didn't have two USC kids when the end, when he uh, when order removed. But you know, it took us seven eight years to find him because he went in hiding. Now he has USC, two USC kids. So, but now he's immune from the law. The court order means nothing. So, the immigration system is screwed up. But uh, you're exactly right. The the millions of people being released in the country they're being released for two reasons. Let me be clear on this. There's two reasons. Number one. It's because they know the, the immigration court data shows nine on time will fail and be ordered removed. The other data point is the DHS uh, life cycle report. That's the DHS secretary's very own report that says this. If you're in ICE detention and you get order removed, you're removed 99% of the time. If you're released and you get an order removal and you're a family unit, for instance, you leave 6% of the time. So this administration knows that. And that's why they're releasing them. That's why they're not detaining them. They know most will fail. But if they don't detain them, they won't be leaving. Well, how many terror people that on the terrorist watch list have tried to enter this country, and how many you know gotaways do you think there are? Well, the, 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 since Biden's been president, they've arrested 267 off the terrorist watch list, and we got 1.7 to 1.8 million gotaways. These are known gotaways. These are counted on drone traffic, sensor traffic. Camera traffic, they've been seen cut crossing the border, but border patrol so overwhelmed with this humanitarian crisis, they couldn't respond because they're in facilities processing. So with 1.8 million gotaways, and here's the scary thing. I, I said this last night. If you got 1.8 million gotaways, border patrols arrested people from 171 different countries. Many of these countries are sponsoring terror. So if they arrested 267, how many of that 1.8 came from a country that sponsored terror? If you think it's zero, then you're ignoring the data. I mean, uh, the terrorists have crossed this border. I'm convinced. Well, sure, and and I mean, if you if you're you know in those numbers and and you know the small percentage of people that have been let in as part of that larger group, well, well, so now what what do we you know we, back during the height of the post 9/11 uh, world. We were worried about sleeper cells because of, you know, what we failed to to uh, discern with respect to the 9-11 hijackers and attackers. And and now we're letting millions of people in and we don't fear sleeper cells anymore, particularly against the backdrop of what we just saw happen in the Gaza over the weekend. You know, I, I was over there for six months ago and I was I, I did a border review because that's that may ask my game. And and he, Six borders, right? They border Egypt, they border Jordan, uh, Syria, Lebanon, and you know two territories: the Gaza and the West Bank, are controlled by Palestinians. Of course, some of the borders are more sophisticated than others, but the most sophisticated border they had, which is more sophisticated than our border in many areas, because many areas we don't have a law, we have very little technology. If they're able to penetrate their border security, what does that say about what they can do to us? Because right now, as we're speaking. Up to 70%, 7 out of 10 border patrol agents have been pulled off the line to process. The other day in Eagle Pass, they had so many in custody, they pulled every single agent off the line. Get that. 100% of the agents were pulled from the line. So not a single uniform was on that line for a couple hundred miles. So it shows how vulnerable our border is. So it, 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 that should wake people up. You know, Israel should wake America up that we've got to control the border. We have to secure that border. Because we we have the right to protect Americans, and, there's, and this administration refuses to do that. Well, what about the reversal on the border wall from the Biden administration? Well, the border wall, you know, they, now, they, now they said they're going to build part of it, but they already sold most of the materials, and other materials are out of it. But I don't think they're going to build a border wall. But I'll say this, and people want to talk about border wall. Border wall works. The border wall that we built on the southern border, it's not meant to 100% stop people. It's not the end all be all. It's a border wall system. You have response capabilities. You have a smart wall. If you dig under it, we know. If you climb it, we know. But what it does is save lives. So like, it's like the most vulnerable, the family groups, right. women and children, they can't climb the wall. So what are they going to do? They're going to go to an area where there's not a wall where border patrol can meet them. And number one, take care of the humanitarian issues. Number two, make sure they don't get away. That was under the Trump administration. Under this administration, you know, they're getting away because Border Patrol is processing and releasing them under orders from DHS. Right. I mean, the, the, the funneling of people so you can process them. And as you say, 
they are not doing things that are as dangerous as or more dangerous than they're already doing during making the journey. But and speaking of the topic, too, if this is, you know, this always characterizes hard hearted and stuff when in point of fact, you're trying to accommodate, you're trying to prevent people from being put in positions of danger, whether it's with respect to being uh, uh, indentured to the cartels or, or or just the danger of the trip itself. Um how about the the, the, the the still this thing? And I know some House Republicans took this up, but 85,000, all this uh, children in cages stuff during the Trump years, 85,000 unaccompanied minors. We also, we, the federal government, don't know where they are. Well, that's a good point. And, and, and the cages were built under Obama administration. I was there. When they were constructed, I was there. Obama was president. But, you know, they say the Trump administration was inhumane, like you just talked about. You know, it's, it's, we're so bad and we're, we're racist and, you know, we're so inhumane. Let me tell you something. Doctors Without Borders did a study on, on, on this crisis, and they've interviewed thousands of women that make that journey. And they said that 31 percent of women that make the journey through the use of the cartels get sexually assaulted. So let me ask you a question. When, when, when President Trump was a president, he had illegal immigration down 83 percent, which means 83 percent less people are coming. How many women weren't being raped? How many children weren't drowning in a river? How many how many Americans weren't dying with fentanyl overdoses because the border patrol's on the line and vigilant and, and sees them more? How many women and children weren't sex trafficked when 83 percent less people are coming? Under President Biden, where they claim their policy is much more humane, we got a record number of migrants that have died on U.S. soil, over 1,700, our record by far. Over 100,000 Americans dying of, uh, of fentanyl, a drug that flows across the open border. The record, the record number of women showed me a sex trafficking in the United States is three times higher than any other year. I mean, so you can't – don't tell me President uh, Trump's policy is inhumane. President Trump's policy saved lives. You just – you know, if you if you take 83 percent of cars off the highway to be less highway deaths, I mean, it's just common sense. President – secure borders saved lives. President Trump did that. Tom Homan, former acting director of ICE. Tom, thank you as always. You got it. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The more you listen, the more you listen, the more you'll know. This is Chicago's morning answer. Morning answer on AM560. The answer. Many novice gold and silver buyers make fatal mistakes when buying precious metals for the first time. Mistakes made because of dealer gimmicks and scams. Dennis Prager here for Amfed Coin and Bullion. My choice and it really is, for buying precious metals. Numerous precious metal dealers are capitalizing on the demand for gold by selling inexperienced investors collectible coins with outrageous markups. One company charges as much as 